This video is going to walk you through the installation of the CRC plenum for the Umarex Notos. The first part of the process is to drain all of the air out of the gun. So the original Notos did not have a degassing screw. If you do not have a small silver degassing screw here, what you can do is you can point the gun in a safe direction and continue to dry fire until your pressure gauge reads zero. For the newer models, they have a degassing screw. And all we have to do is loosen the screw about a quarter turn and allow the air to drain. Once all the air has been drained out, be sure to check the pressure gauge, make sure it reads zero before going any further. We can tighten back, tighten the screw back down for now. One of the first steps you want to take is to remove the plastic pistol grip. So there's two screws on either side, and that is a two millimeter Allen wrench. Once you've removed the grip, you can loosen the trigger mechanism. There's one screw back here in the rear and one screw here. And this is a 2.5 millimeter Allen wrench. Be careful when you remove the trigger mechanism. There is a small spring here that can pretty easily get lost. So we gotta make sure that goes back correctly. At this point, you can unscrew the air tank. So if it's a brand new Notos and you've never taken this off before, it might be a little tight. I would try not to use pliers, but if it's on that tight, maybe wrap it with a a nice thick rag before you grab it with pliers so that it doesn't mar the surface. Once the tank is unscrewed, we have to remove the barrel. And the barrel is removed by first, by starting with this screw here. So this is a 2.5 millimeter Allen wrench. And underneath that screw, there is another screw. And that one is a 2 millimeter Allen wrench. So down inside that hole, there's a small set screw. We don't need to take that one out, just need to loosen it maybe two or three full turns. Once you've got that screw loose, you should be able to pull the barrel out of the receiver. Try to twist the barrel out so that it doesn't damage the O-rings. The O-rings on the Umarex Note Toaster are pretty, pretty sensitive, and there's also some sharp edges in here that tend to cut the O-rings as you install or remove them. So do your best to be careful with that. There are spare O-rings for the barrel in the spare, car spare parts kit. As you're going through this process, take a look at all of the different O-rings, and if you see any that are damaged, there should be one in the kit to replace place any damaged O-rings you find in the process. Now that we've gotten this far, all we have to do is remove this part and install the CRC plenum. So there are two screws on the front that need to be completely removed. And there are also two screws on the back, which I think is a three millimeter Allen wrench. As you're loosening these two screws, there will be a little bit of spring tension pushing this part away. So be careful to control it while you loosen the screw so that no, none of the parts go flying from the spring. Okay. So underneath this component, you will find an O-ring, which may still be stuck on that part. If that O-ring is in good shape, feel free to reuse it. And you will find a valve spring, and there's also a valve. 
these ones are going to go right back in the way they came out. Now, on this spring, there's a small side and a big side. The small side goes onto the white plastic piece. There we go. Oh, by the way, this is a completely stock Notos aside from the charging handle. This is a prototype we're working on, which may be coming out one of these days. All right, at this point, it's time to install the plenum. So this one's got a pressure gauge installed on it for just to demonstrate in, in, as part of this video. Um, this does not come with the plenum, but they are available on Amazon. I think I got two of these for about $8. Um, search for M8 by one pressure gauge, and you'll probably find a few options that are relatively cheap. So we got to put an O-ring onto this side. Again, spares if you need them. And we will put this on in place of the original part. So this is held on with a spring. It's pushing away with a spring, I should say. So you kind of got to hold it while you install the screws. I'm going to start with these two because they're a little bit easier for me. So go ahead and get these screws installed, but do not tighten them down all the way. Just finger tight for the moment. And then we can install the other two screws on the front side. And again, finger tight with these two screws. Once you've gotten this far, it's a good time to stop and take a look and make sure that the plenum is not installed crooked in any way. If it is, definitely stop, disassemble it, figure out why it's crooked, and get it on there nice and straight before you completely tighten down the, the four screws. This one looks good, so I'm going to go ahead and tighten it down. Also, be very careful not to strip these screws. They are fairly delicate. Okay, the plenum's installed, and now all we have to do is reassemble in the opposite order that we took everything apart. The barrel has a small dimple for the set screw to keep it in place. When you install the barrel, you have to make sure that that dimple is facing up towards the set screw that holds it. So what I like to do is take that dimple and align it with the hole in the Picatinny rail by eye. Okay, I'm looking through this hole right now and I can see the dimple underneath. So that'll get me started. And then I can install the barrel, trying to keep that upward. Now that the barrel's in there, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slightly tighten down this screw and then wiggle the barrel to make sure that the set screw is going into the notch. Hopefully you can see that the set screw is just a little bit into the notch, but it's not fully tightened down. Once you make sure it's in the notch, then you can go ahead and snug it down. And of course, be careful. Little tiny screws are very easy to strip. And then we can replace the screw on top that holds down the pick rail. Now that the barrel is installed, we can make sure the spring goes back in. It's um, important to make sure that the spring is standing straight up. If it's crooked, the trigger assembly will not go back together correctly. Um, usually these are held in with a little bit of grease and the grease kind of helps keep it in position while you do your assembly. So on this component, there's a small hole in the sear and you want to make sure that that spring goes into that hole. If it does not, the trigger mechanism will not work correctly. So I'm going to adjust the spring as I put these two pieces together to make sure that the spring goes where it's supposed to.
And then these two pieces need to be held together while you tighten down the screws because the spring will pull them apart if you don't. So again, I'm just going to snug these two screws down. I don't want to tighten them down all the way just yet. I want to make sure it's assembled correctly and in the correct position. The only two parts we have to install now are the tank, which simply screws on. And we've got the pistol grip, which goes back on with four screws. All right, plenum is assembled. Now all we gotta do is fill her up. As you're filling up for the first time, be sure to do it slowly and carefully. And as you're filling it up, you may need to cock the hammer back so that the gas doesn't leak past the hammer. And as you're about halfway full, be sure to check to make sure, if you have a gauge installed, be sure to check that it's tight and not leaking. And the same thing goes for the degassing screw on the either side. So sometimes those are not installed tight enough and you don't know until you start to fill it. Be ready with your Allen wrenches to tighten those two screws or your gauge down if it's leaking at all. I'm going to start to fill. Okay, we've got some pressure in it. I'm going to stop and make sure that I don't hear any leaks. Seems okay. And it looks like we're about good on pressure. That's all there is to it.